This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got two very fun games on tap this weekend with the NFC and AFC Conference Championships. The Ravens taking on the Chiefs, the 49ers taking on the Lions. We're going to break down both those games today with Dr. Ed Feng getting his read on those games, where his numbers show value at FanDuel Sportsbook, and get you ready for what should be a delightful Sunday. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here is mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work on Twitter at the Power Rank. Check him out at uh, thepowerrank.com as well. And Ed, uh, pretty fun games on tap. You're wearing your Michigan hats, I'm assuming because of the Jim Harbaugh news as well. So how are you doing today? Doing pretty well. I mean, I, I picked up the Michigan hat because it was on top of a bunch <laughs> of hats. But yes, Jim Harbaugh's out back to the NFL. I uh, wish him the best. Uh, if that's what he wants to do, he should go for it. So, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of un- a lot of uncertainty in college football now. Uh, we'll see what Michigan ends up doing. I think uh, if I were Michigan, I would make one phone call to Lance Leopold, uh, see if there's any interest, and then probably just probably – promote Tyrone Moore to the head spot. I think he's earned it. Uh, a little bit of a risk when you have a young coach that doesn't have any head coaching experience, or I guess you could argue little head coaching <laughs> full experience. Season, yeah. <laughs> he's never he's never run a program. Uh, I think you could do a great job, but but we'll have to see about that. But, you know, more changes in college football and uh, makes everything more everything next year that much more interesting. Yeah, and it's a bummer to lose Jim Harbaugh from the Big Ten as a a Big Ten fan myself, but also it is nice to have him back in the NFL to kind of see if he can replicate what he did the first time. Like, those teams were good uh, back when he was with the Niners, and I think we have had a long enough track record on him at three very different stops to say this guy can get the job done. and. When you give him a quarterback like Justin Herbert and right. conversely give Justin Herbert a coach like him, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Right. San Diego was the one job that I think he had to take. If he wanted to go back to the NFL and he got offered the San Diego job, he had to take it. San Diego, Los Angeles, <laughs> wherever, wherever the heck they are. The Chargers job. Catch it. <laughs> the, the, one that, the one that comes with uh, Justin Herbert, who right. is probably the best quarterback that he has coached since Andrew Luck. Certainly the highest ceiling. I think you could argue he has a higher ceiling than Andrew Luck, too. Right. Uh, We know Justin Herbert can be amazing. They really haven't shown it yet. Uh, You know, I mean, they got some interesting pieces on defense, too. Uh, I think that the the defense with with the right coaching, the right um, a couple simple moves. I think I I mean, I think it's a better situation than when he first got to San Francisco, however many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And. So, yeah, you know, it, that doesn't mean it's going to work out. Uh, there's never any certainty that things are going to work out uh, at any level of, co- of football. But uh, I wish them the best and uh, hope it works out well. Yeah, I just want to see Justin Herbert in a competent offensive environment. And that's that's hopefully what we'll, we'll be getting here with Harbaugh. So excited to see that one next year. Before then, though, we got to break down what we're going to see this Sunday for these conference championship matchups. We'll break down what Ed thinks about those games here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow, J.J. Zacharyson swings back by talking some player props for the conference championships. We'll also have Austin Cass on to talk about the EPL match week 22, which begins next Tuesday. All that right here in the covering the spread podcast feed. So go search for that wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. When it comes to the NFL playoffs, you got to win one game at a time. But when you bet the NFL playoffs on FanDuel, one game can mean a lot of wins. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, has all your favorite bets like the money line and spread there's all sorts of prop bets like quarterback passing yards who will score the first touchdown plus every day there's an nfl playoff game fanduel is giving all customers a no sweat same game parlay that means when you combine all your bets for a chance at a bigger payday you'll get bonus bets back if your sgp doesn't win make every moment more with fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the 
the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Minimum three leg parlay required. Refund issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Fanduel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700, or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Now, Ed, we'll dig into these games here in a second. We've seen some shortening in the Super Bowl market at FanDuel Sportsbook. Right now, the Niners are plus 140, down from plus 150 earlier on this week, and the Ravens are shortened to plus 170 from plus 190. Now, obviously, as those shorten, others lengthen. So has the sentiment on those two teams provided any value for you on either the Chiefs at plus 450 or the Lions at plus 850, which is where things stand right now? No, I mean, I think this market looks about right to me. I I haven't run any numbers on it, but the market hasn't inspired me to run any numbers on it. Um, I will, we'll get into the matchups. I mean, I think there's some very good reasons uh, not to like Detroit to get past this weekend. San Francisco should, should make it there. Baltimore clearly has a tougher matchup in in Kansas city, uh, but they should be able to get it done. So, I mean, you know, that outright market looks pretty good. How are you feeling about your, uh, your matchup? between the Niners and the Ravens uh, after the, your son was looking at the the logo thing. Yeah. It's uh, I, th- I think you should feel pretty good. It's, yeah. Yeah. Minus I, 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 I mean, you know, I mean, you, you don't have to look further than the markets and the spreads to, to figure out that those, those look pretty good, but we'll, we'll break it down a little bit more and why I think um, San Francisco and Baltimore uh, are probably going to play in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And that's one I talked about on Monday in the first look. Uh, the first look podcast talked about uh, the Niners and Ravens to win. That was plus 110 at the time. It's now minus 110. I had that at 51%. So the value is now gone there. If you're tuning in now, didn't get a piece of that, I would not bother because I think the value has been gone there. Sucked out of the market because we've seen some movement in favor of the Ravens and Niners ever since. Let's talk now about the first game. That is the Kansas City Chiefs at the Baltimore Ravens right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. We got a three and a half point spread. There were some fours yesterday. I don't think FanDuel ever got there. They're still at three and a half right now. Total is 44 and a half right now. And let's start things off here on the Ravens offensive side of the ball. That Offense looked really good against the Texans, and now they may get Mark Andrews back. But, you know, the Chiefs defense has played pretty well all year long. So how do you see things playing out when the Ravens had the football? Right. I mean, I think the thing to note about the Ravens offense is that they're pretty good at running the ball. And despite how good Kansas City has been on defense, a lot of that has come from stopping the pass. When they haven't been that good at stopping the run, they're actually 32nd when I look at rushing success rate allowed after adjusting for opposition. You've seen this characteristic of Kansas City's defense for for a couple seasons. They they tend to try to stop the pass. They've actually been very good at that. Uh, that it was kind of the same thing last week. I mean, we thought Buffalo had a pretty good run offense with uh, James Cook. And they actually did pretty well. They had a 59% rushing success rate, which is significantly better than the NFL average of about 42%. Baltimore is going to have the same game plan. I think Lamar is going to run a lot too. He's going to scramble because I do think, you know, Kansas City's corners are pretty good and are going to be able to play some pretty good coverage there. I don't think the matchups really favor. uh, I, I think the matchups favor Baltimore. I think they're going to be able to run the ball be able to control the game. And, uh, you know, you see that they're a three and a half point favorite. That seems right. Um, you know, circus out at four. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets to four by the time we kick off. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned the Lamar part too, because that's the area where the chiefs have really struggled this year is stopping 
mobile quarterback. Saw it a bit with Josh Allen last week, but it's been a pretty consistent thing for them. And now you get them against Lamar Jackson, but also I think more importantly, it's playoff Lamar Jackson where he runs a lot during the postseason. Like we talk about that a lot with every quarterback, how they're more willing to run in these high leverage spots. But Lamar's postseason career, he's gone for a hundred plus rushing yards and three out of five playoff matchups. He is very aggressive. And I think that's a concern here for this team. And that's not to mention the fact that the non Lamar elements of this, this offense have been pretty good too, even without Keaton Mitchell with no JK Dobbins. So I think that will be a pretty tough spot for the chiefs defense. Try to slow down that rushing offense for the Ravens. Now the chiefs offense has also had two pretty good showings in the playoffs <laughs> so far, but they're facing the toughest opponent they've had in a while. So can the chiefs maintain the gains they've flashed in the playoffs? I certainly think so. I certainly hope so. So we can see more shots of Jason Kelsey in the, in the luxury <laughs> suites. Uh, I probably spent more time on Monday morning looking at Jason Kelsey video than I, than I care to admit, but, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> Kansas city's offense has been really good uh, lately. Um, not something that is, is unexpected. We knew that they have uh, the potential. They had a passing success rate of uh, about 61% against Buffalo. And part of that was, you know, they had some cluster injuries in the Buffalo secondary. They had two guys out, a couple guys that probably weren't 100%. Um, I think the other thing to note is that, you know, there weren't any critical drops in that game. Uh, you know, none from Kelsey and even uh, MVS caught the ball when when it was thrown in his direction. So we, we know this Chiefs uh, offense has a high ceiling. Baltimore's defense has, has been really, really good. So I, I think it is an interesting matchup. Um, one thing to note, you know, Marlon Humphrey has been an awesome cornerback for Baltimore for years. Um, he hasn't played since week 17. Looks like he's he's probably not going to play. Uh, but his backup, Ron Darby, has been pretty good, at least by PFF coverage grade. Um, I, I do expect Baltimore's defense to be able to slow up, slow down K Kansas City just enough. Um, you know, overall, I have this game at – uh, Baltimore by about 2.2 points. Uh, but I don't really see any value on that side. Um, I mean, gun to head, I'd probably lean Kansas City plus three and a half. But I don't think there's a ton of value there. Uh, I do think the I, I do think Baltimore's defense is good enough, and I think they have enough um, good matchups on offense with with their run game um, that they, they should win this. And, and uh, I, I think three and a half is a pretty good number. Yeah, three and a half right now, the number at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you want to take the plus three and a half, that's minus 105. But as I'd mentioned, probably a pretty decent shot we do get to a four here. So you could hold out a bit longer and see if you're in on the cheese. See if we get that to be four, which, I again, I think would probably happen at some point. Because uh, this is gone. You can get some threes on Monday. Uh, it was the minus three and a half, I think, was even money. Uh, for the Ravens on later Monday, and now it's minus 115. So there's definitely been some movement uh, toward the Ravens here. Now, I, I think that uh, I think it's interesting. You got it by 2.2. We talked a lot about Mahomes and still not really itching to take the three and a half. What is the the cause for you for hesitancy in? Is it just not a big enough margin for you uh, to justify it? Or what? what is leading to the hesitation in taking the three and a half? Baltimore has been the best team in the AFC all year. Uh, still going to stand by that. And as good as Patrick Mahomes is, um, yeah, can he keep it close? For sure. Um, but uh, I it just, I, again, like I said, like the matchups uh, are going to favor Baltimore. I think their defense is good enough. Uh, to at least get a couple stops. So I do think they win this game. And um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not betting the side here. Yeah. You did mention that there is an interception prop that catches your interest in this game uh, for the chiefs and the Ravens. What, what is that? Uh, and what leads to that analysis for you? Patrick Mahomes is one of the best in uh, not uh, putting the ball in dangerous positions. And my research has shown that, uh, you know, the rate at which you put, the ball in dangerous positions is is kind of the key to predicting um uh kind of the key to predicting interceptions going sorry i'm look i never i'm getting distracted by you putting up this market because i'm like oh that's freaking fantastic um, <laughs> anyways i have patrick mahomes at uh 53.2 not to throw ah. a pick 
as one of the league's best. So this is uh, no is minus 104, 105 at DraftKings, but suggests a tiny little bit of value. Obviously, when you're plus 104, um, uh, that's a better price. Look, when Patrick, look, anytime that you can have the under on Patrick Holmes, you feel good. Anytime that you can have the over on a Baker Mayfield, you feel good <laughs> because he's awful uh at preventing balls from going into dangerous positions um so 53 percent is where you know where my model puts it uh i i never i mean i want to go bet this right now like i i, I these this, these props are never up on my fan duel um so anyways yeah. i can vamp if you want to go get it right now i can i can vamp <laughs> i guess i can't really stop the show and do it but I should probably finish the pod first I'll tell yeah, them to hold off. Uh, I'll keep this under wraps price. for a bit to to try to <laughs> get you some luck there. Plus 104 is on the Mahomes to not throw a pick number. Did you have the Baker prop last week for him to throw a pick? No. So that's a really oh. interesting story. Uh, I had Baker to throw a pick the two weeks before. Yeah. The first was against Carolina, and he didn't throw. I mean, they lost both weeks. He did not throw a pick against Carolina the last week of the season. I still think it was a pretty good bet. He ended up putting, uh, you know, five bad balls. So uh, he no picks, but five times the defense ended up uh, ended up getting hand on the ball. Yeah. And um, usually, like, kind of the break even 50-50 point is like three bad balls. If you kind of do the math like that, if you have three bad balls, there's about a fifty percent chance you get a pick. So um, if you have five, you know, you say, hey, that's a good bet. Uh, and uh, it just didn't work out against uh, who, who they play. Oh, Philly. Um, yeah. You know, the price was uh, good. Again, um, I bet over over a half interception, I bet Baker to throw a pick. He did not. Uh, I think he only had one or two bad balls in that game, so that was not as good of a bet. Obviously, you can blame Philadelphia's complete lack of showing up on, yeah. on the defensive side of the ball maybe for that. And honestly, before last week, I, I I anticipated making the case like, look, we got to bet Baker again. We got to bet Baker again. Like this guy is literally, quite literally, one of the worst at uh, at, at at putting the ball in dangerous positions. And yeah. then the market completely flipped. And so you know the price was like minus one fifty, minus one sixty, like right on top of where my numbers had it. And uh, I was really disappointed, and even more disappointed when he threw a couple picks. Right. First drive, I think he threw a pick to it was off Mike Evans' hand. Yeah. So you know, yeah. but 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 the one at the end of the game just right classic to Baker Mayfield yeah. where he throws it to the linebacker. It was uh, a, it was the most like I know that like this could just be because they're they're both Bucks players, but it was the most Jameis Winston pick I've ever seen Baker Mayfield throw. <laughs> <laughs> like that was always the thing with Jameis is like that linebacker is by himself right yep. to him. I, that would that was when Jameis was his most accurate. If a linebacker was open. Jameis had like 100% accuracy rating at, at all times. <laughs> but yeah, Baker Baker did that one too. Okay, so Ed is on Mahomes to throw a pick, or to not throw a pick, plus 104 uh, right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's talk about the second game here on Sunday. That is the Lions at the 49ers right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Niners at our seven point favorites. The minus seven is minus 120 right now. FanDuel Sportsbook total in this game is up to 51 and a half. It had sell, it had stood pat at 50 and a half for a pretty long while. Now, key thing here is Debo Samuel didn't practice Wednesday. Sounds like he's got a shot to go based on what Kyle Shanahan said on Wednesday. How much does Debo's status impact your view of the 49ers in this game? I honestly don't care. I know that sounds as crazy given just what a quality player Debo Samuel is, but the San Francisco offense still has a ton of weapons. They still have Brock Purdy, who has been an absolute revelation both last year and this year in terms of his efficiency. Um, I, I don't think Debo really matters. I mean, I have this game at Detroit, uh, sorry, by San Francisco about by six and a half points. And look, Detroit's, Defense is not good, and um, I, I don't think you need Debo Samuel in this offense to uh, to score points against a, a pretty poor secondary. So um, I, I see the matchups is pretty good for San Francisco, and uh, um, yeah. So one thing I did want to mention that that I dug up this morning, uh, you know, we've noticed about how offensive efficiency, passing efficiency, has declined over the last couple seasons as defenses tend to play too high safeties. You can see this in the drop in yards per pass attempt. Uh, it was 6.39 in 
2020, the COVID year, it's down to 6.08 in 2023. Uh, I mean, that's a significant decline. San Francisco has been immune to this. Um, you know, Brock Purdy, when I take yards for pass attempt uh, for only Purdy and then adjust for opponents, I have him at 8.06. Uh, so he would be expected to throw for 8.06 yards per pass attempt against an average NFL defense, obviously more against a team like Detroit. Um, that's more than a half yard, better than the second best quarterback in the NFL and, you know, almost two yards better. They really, in in the in, over the course of the season, they've really been able to get the ball downfield, hit those explosive plays, despite uh, they're going against the general trend of NFL defenses. I think that's incredibly impressive. And I really, I mean, Pretty didn't have the best game last week, but I, I really don't think that stops uh, against this Detroit defense. I don't either. And I agree with you on the Debo part, too, because people look back to earlier on this year when Debo was not playing and they're like, hey, you know, the Niners lost a couple of games to the to the Vikings and the Bengals when right. Debo is out. But their left tackle, Trent Williams, was also out. And I think that he matters more personally than Debo Samuel does. And in those two games, it was really just picks and like. Picks, as you know, from your analysis, can be a little bit fluky. Um, and in those two games, Purdy averaged 9.1 yards per attempt against the Vikings and 11.8 against the Bengals. <laughs> he was shredding. He just threw really bad picks. But right. that's not something he does super, super often. I know the Ravens game was pretty bad, but a lot of that was like getting behind, negative game scripts, being aggressive, stuff like that. So I'm sure it's a downgrade to not have Debo, but like if you look at their game or their their splits with and without Debo, I threw out week six because they also didn't have um, Christian McCaffrey for a large chunk of that game on the road against the Browns in, in tough conditions, excluding week six. Their success rate is 56.6% without Debo versus 54.2% with Debo. It actually goes up. That's not something you would expect to happen and be sustainable, but like. They haven't been, there hasn't been that big of a drop off. It's just been kind of random interception look. So I agree with you that it's not going to be a big downgrade, massive downgrade to not have Debo out there. Let's talk about the Lions side of things here. Uh, they showed last week that they can win through the air. They've been a run centric team the second half of the year because they're very efficient running the football, but they showed they can win through the air too. So how do they match up for you against this 49ers defense by your numbers? Right. I mean, I, th I do think they are going to be able to run the ball. I don't think it's, you know, it's not a matchup that really stands out to me like in Baltimore versus Kansas city. I think Detroit's going to need to get it done in the air. I mean, they're one of the best teams in the NFL. Uh, I have San Francisco's defense is good, but, but not great. I think I'm 10th of my adjusted passing success rate. Jared Goff needs to, to get it done to, for them to, um, to stay in this game, potentially win this game. You know, like I said, like I actually feel like this game is very similar to last week's uh, with Detroit and Tampa Bay. So Tampa Bay was a team coming in, and I felt fairly confident that the home team of Detroit was going to win. Tampa Bay was just a, a step, a, a downgrade from from Detroit, and um, Tampa Bay needed a lot of things to go well to kind of pull off the upset on the road um, in their second weekend in the playoffs. I feel, now I feel like it's the same thing for San Francisco. Like San Francisco is just that much better right and so for Detroit to win you need some breaks you need to not have turnovers you need to be really efficient on offense you need to have your defense regress to the mean um can it happen sure it can definitely happen but is it likely to happen I don't really think so I expect San Francisco to move on here yeah and as mentioned before San Francisco is minus seven right now minus 120 you said your numbers have six and a half so probably not yeah. taking the side with the Niners here any bets that do stand out to you for Lions versus Niners yeah, you know, earlier this week, I'd kind of said that I would be interested in Detroit plus seven and a half. And I, and I do think it might get there. Then I was kind of looking at um, the Niners pass rush versus Detroit's offensive line. And Detroit's offensive line kind of has some holes in the middle. So Frank Ragnow is kind of banged up. And uh, Jonah Jackson is out the guard. For San Francisco, you kind of think the the sacks all come from the edge because they have Nick Bosa, uh, but their interior guys are actually really good at, at rushing the passer. They have the uh, the two best pass rush grades besides Bosa on the team. So I, I don't think that is a good matchup. Um, I think golf could be under a lot of pressure. Um, I think they're going to have to get the ball out quick, which which they usually do. Um, but because of that matchup, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not sure I'm interested in Detroit plus seven and a half anymore. 
Yeah, and I agree with your assessment that we probably will get there, uh, given that it's minus 120 on the minus seven right now. I think we will get there. Now, obviously, it's a pretty significant shift, but I understand the thought process here, too, because this is a game that could has like spiral-esque potential if they get down, if they're able to kind of pin their ears back and like let that pass rush cook, that could be an issue for Jared Goff. So I had the over in this game when it was at 50 and a half. Uh, I don't see any value anymore, and I definitely would not bet it because... 51 is a key number and I have concerns when it was 50 and a half. It's fine. I know it's only one number or one, one point, but like that makes a big difference to get a win on 51 versus a loss now on 51. So I think with where the market's at, it's, it's a stay away. Uh, hopefully you got the 50 and a half earlier on this week. I think that was a good bet, but uh, with where it's at right now, I, I, I would have pretty, my, my concerns around golf and the offense would be amplified with where things stand right now. Good thing is there's very little wind three miles per hour uh, for Sunday in the forecast. So I think that's beneficial, but I agree with your assessment that market's pretty efficient right now. And I see no value on the side either. I've got this at 7.1, I believe. Yeah. 7.1. So pretty efficient market with where things stand right now. All right. That's all we got for today, Ed. As always, a delight to have you on the show. I was going to ask you uh, what you had going on the Power Rank this week, but uh, I already checked out your Football Analytics Show podcast with Drew Dinzik from yesterday. Always a delightful guest. Uh, for those who have really? not listened yet, uh, what did you and Drew go through for the championship conference championships? Yeah, he gave me a bunch of bets, uh, so that was awesome. Obviously, went through the two games, and um, you know his pr perspective and his numbers are a little different from mine. So, I highly recommend going and checking that out at the the Football Analytics Show. Also, I asked him about his biggest takeaway from the season, which I, which I thought was pretty interesting as well. Uh, general thoughts about how you can still find value in a very analytic centric betting market, right? Um, so, yeah, check that out wherever you get your podcasts. And Five Nuggets Saturday is still going strong, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Five Nuggets Saturday. Um, I usually, I, if, through most of the season, I've I put, uh, you know, like, there's usually like two bets in there of the Nuggets. I usually end with a little bit of humor and put some analytics in there. I'm really, really been pushing for like three bets through the playoffs. Uh, we'll try to continue to do that through the next three weeks. Uh, obviously, we lost Super Bowl props. Uh, and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, Five Nuggets Saturday is my sports betting newsletter. Uh, as I like to say, if you're looking for any action on any given weekend, uh, this is the free service for you. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. All right, and find the podcast with Drew by searching for the Football Analytics Show. Find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim.Sonis, and you can check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. We are back once again tomorrow talking some player props with JJ Zacharyson and EPL with Austin Cass. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 